So, as we conclude this video series, I hope that e I have imparted to you the essence of EDA and how crucial we are to the chip industry, to the semiconductor industry. What we do is we let the engineers and the manufacturers produce faster designs, much faster, because you can't do this by hand. So each new Christmas time comes along, you're going to get a new product that's really exciting. So everything is getting faster and faster. And we're helping design bigger designs and making them better. So all of the Moore's Law marching along, everything getting more and more complicated in a tiny, tiny chip. EDA is helping make bigger designs better. And we're making things that are so complex that they're mind-boggling into something as simple as writing a line that says, if I have an incoming call and my line's available, then ring. And so where are we going in this? What, what, what's up our sleeve? What, where, what kinds of problems do we have to solve, which will, will never end, which is kind of exciting to me. So the first thing that we're doing is we're figuring out new ways to design chips. We call these methodologies, which is kind of a fancy way of saying, what steps are we going to take and what tools are we going to use? How can we think about things differently? So for instance, if I know when I'm placing and routing those gates together, if I know something about that, that darn, if I had only done it early on in synthesis, then I would have saved myself weeks of time. So EDA can take those kinds of concepts and change the design process so that those kinds of things are found a lot earlier in the process. And that's um, improving the methodology. The next thing we're doing, and I, this is really exciting, we have a concept that's called SOC, or System on a Chip. So remember these big circuit boards from the past. This was the video card, by the way. Consider this to be a system. What if we could put this system on this chip? That's pretty awesome. Now my video card gets to be this big, and I can carry my gaming computer in my pocket. So system on a chip is phenomenal. And it's not just making things smaller, because so many problems get introduced when you just shrink all this down. So one of the tricks to being able to actually do the, do the system on a chip is to be able to reuse these little parts. And I've talked about that before, where if you can capture your design, and, and we call it IP, intellectual property, like a little building block. If you can capture that and reuse it when you're doing a system on a chip, you're going to save um, an enormous amount of time. So IP and design reuse is where you're redoing, uh, reusing those little building blocks that you've created before, uh, a very important piece of, of, how to, uh, of where we're going. We're going to solve some kind of amazing design issues. We're learning more about thinking about the design up front so that it's more testable. We're thinking about, gee, in the design, if I do this, then I can verify it easier. Or if I do this kind of a thing when I'm designing the chip, I can manufacture it better. Or what if I do this, then I know that when I uh, actually have that wafer, that more of those chips are going to work. I'm going to get a better yield, they call it. I don't have to throw so much away. So these things, design for test, design for verification, design for manufacturing, design for yield, these are uh, crucial kinds of things that, are, that, that we're dealing with. And other things, um, I mentioned earlier in a, in a different video that when wires get too close to each other, sometimes the electricity can jump over, or interfere with the other wire. So we need to solve those kinds of problems. We need to solve problems like by accident, when things got so small, Little antennas were being built that people didn't realize, and they were pulling radio signals out of the air. And the chip is totally messed up. So how do we prevent that type of a phenomenon, phenomenon from happening? So all these challenging, challenging design issues that happen as we get smaller and smaller, EDA is, is continuing to solve. And of course, the business aspect, any time that we can help the semiconductor, the chip manufacturers grow their business, it grows our business as well, which ultimately enables that 10 times more productive every six years. And I'd like to conclude with some additional resources that you may be interested in. Uh, there's a couple of books. I'll show them to you. This 
actually, I don't have this on the slide, but um, there's, a, there, there's a little booklet. If you guys would like a copy of this, I, I can email it to you. Just put a comment down in the, in the YouTube box down below, and I'm happy to get it to you. It's just a short brochure that kind of summarizes everything that we've talked about here today, all of the different steps. It's a little bit out of date, but it's still like pretty cool, I think. Happy to give this out to everybody. The top reference is called EDA, Where Electronics Begins. This is a, a kind of a neat book. They use an analogy in here of a chip being like a city. And so if the analogy of chips being switches didn't quite you know, make sense to you, this book might be helpful too. And it's very simple to read and has a lot of the same kinds of concepts that I talked about. And you can order this online at um, edac.org. Um, They'll sell it to you. It's not that expensive. Um, you can get that. The next book is a little more advanced, Electronic Design Automation by Mark Birnbaum. If you intend on going further into this field, say you might be a student and you're intrigued by it, that book is a, a more detailed reference. There's a video called Silicon Run that I've seen several times, and it's fascinating. It's all about the manufacturing process. It's quite an expensive video. It's used for training purposes and so forth. But if um, you work at a big company and they happen to have this in their library, it's definitely interesting. And you can see all the machinery and all the steps that go into manufacturing the chips. And if you'd like a short video, it's like 15 minutes, you can also from edac.org get a, a little tiny uh, sort of an overview of all of this called uh, EDA Where Electronics Begins on, on DVD. Finally, if you get a chance to visit the Intel Museum, it's amazing. So there's all this kind of stuff that I've been showing you at the uh, Intel Museum. And finally, for my company, uh, Synopsys, we want to offer you all the information that you, you could possibly want. We have a series of company blogs. I'm one of the bloggers where we give all kinds of information. You can subscribe to our blogs. Uh, there's an online radio station that we have called Conversation Central that you can listen to. We publish shows once a month, and they're out on iTunes with a variety of topics from business to industry to uh, just leadership and, and uh, there's a story about a woman who was in the Tokyo earthquake. Um, so some kind of cool stuff on the radio. And then um, we have a LinkedIn group and oh, I, I've been dying to say this. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. <laughs> and of course, continue to watch our YouTube videos. And uh, we're here to help. And I wish you all the very, very best. And thank you so much for uh, watching the videos.